This is using the filter gallery to enhance your photos. So I am in the photography workspace. And if I wanted to use, say, Gaussian Blur, I use that a lot. I can always go up to Filter and just choose Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I already know what that looks like. That's a pretty simple effect that I use a lot. So if you know what effect you want, that's fine. Go ahead and add it. But what if I don't know what effect I want? I'm going to back up Control Z. And I'm going to go to Filter, Filter Gallery. This is going to open up a new dialog that has most of the filters available. So we can go through and just kind of look and see what look we want for our photo. And of course, you can always go and change things. There's different kind of choices over here for whatever you may have chosen. So don't just choose the default. Really go and mess with it and make it your own. Um, in fact, let's see, we have different type of textures we can use on this one. So let's say we've decided we want to use this with the canvas texture, and I'm going to say OK. It's now added that to my photo. But you can see that it did not give it a separate layer. It is just attached to this layer. If we decide we don't want this, we've got a problem. In fact, let's go ahead and add a second something fun to this. I'm going to say Filter, Filter Gallery. And this time I want to add chalk and charcoal. OK, let's say OK. And oh, that looks great. But what if we decide we want to go back to the one that was before? Well, the way that we did it this time, it's not going to work that great. So let's kind of back up. I'm going to go ahead and throw these away. Let's back up to where we started. There's a couple of ways we can deal with that. First off, we can add both of the filters at one time. So let's go up to Filter, Filter Gallery. And I like this chalk and charcoal. But let's say I want to add something on top of that. I can go down here to the plus and add two effects. So my second effect, let's say I want glass. I now have both of them. And let's kind of pull that one down so maybe we can. And I can turn the eyeball on and off to see what it would look like with or without and you know what, I think I do like it just with glass. So I could pick that up and throw it into the trash can, or I could continue to add more. So you can have two things on at the same time if you'd like, and let's hit OK. But the problem comes with this is, what if I want to change them after I have already done it? Like say I want to make these cells bigger. Well, we've got a problem. It's almost like printing them out on a piece of paper. So a better way to do this is use smart layers. So I'm going to back up once again, just throw this away. And this time, before I go into Filter Gallery, I'm going to click on the hamburger menu in Layers, and I'm going to say Convert to Smart Object. Now this time, when I go to Filter, Filter Gallery, I can do it either way that I want. I can add, let's just add one at a time. So I'm going to add just the stained glass. I'm going to hit OK. And you will see down here, it now has a filter gallery. It's not, it's separate. So if I decide I want to change that, I can just double click on filter gallery. It's going to open it back up and say I make the cell size bigger. Now hit OK. Because I used a smart layer, it's going to let me change it. I can also turn it off and on. And I have a mask right here, so I could even mask out Part of it, white to reveal, black to conceal. So what if I wanted to mask out part of it? Let me turn the opacity up on this. So using smart filters along with the filter gallery is a really smart thing to do. And there you go.